One of the questions that I get the most often throughout my different color grading tutorials is if you have to apply the whole color grading note tree to every single clip, if you're grading a larger project or just in general. And I get the question, if you're new to color grading or just wanna up your efficiency in general, it might be a little bit too much to think you have to add the color grade or the note tree to every single one and apply the adjustments to every single clip. And while you can do it on the first one and then add it to all the rest, there is a better way if you are grading larger projects or just want to be faster or better at grading in a more cohesive way. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. And the technique we're going to use is grouping clips in the light box. And if you don't know what the light box is or grouping in DaVinci Resolve, don't worry, we're going to get to it in a second. But before we jump into DaVinci, I want to mention that there's a ton of different ways that you can use this grouping tool. What I'm going to mention today is grading by camera or grading by scene. Those are the two most common things that I use it for, but you could also just put everything into one group and then start using it that way. So let's just jump straight into DaVinci and have a look at what I'm talking about with all these groups. All right, so we're inside DaVinci and everything that I've done is just add in my clips from a recent spec ad that we just shot. So I'm just gonna use that as an example because this is exactly how I graded that spec ad. So we have two scenes. We have an indoor scene in an apartment here that then transitions out into an outdoor scene on a hike. So those are pretty much the two scenes that I'm going to group by here. If we jump into the color page, if you are new to this whole structure, this is the notary area. You probably know that already. And now we are on the clip level. If you watched any of my tutorials before, this is pretty much where all of them are existing in. So this is just a clip level. This is where we add notes and we create any specific clip by itself. You can also switch to the timeline if you've seen that before or if this is the first time. What this is essentially doing is if you're adding, let's say contrast in here, you're not only affecting this clip, you're actually affecting all the clips at once. And in an instant that might seem, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. But the problem with this is that if you're adding something like, let's say a text object. So let's say we're adding some text in here and we just wanna make that say yellow. So we're just gonna make that yellow in like an orange way here. If we then go back into our color here and go into the timeline, we start messing around with the colors in here. We're also changing the colors of the text because in this timeline note tree, we're affecting everything that's in the timeline. So that's not excluding text, that's not excluding adjustment layers or anything else you'll put in here. So it's not very ideal to grade this way unless you only have clips in here, which when you start editing more is rarely the instance. So if you have to put any text, logos, anything in here, this will not work. So just delete the text layer here again go back into our color page and just reset our timeline note tree here. So while this can work for some things, I highly suggest that you keep away as much as possible from using the timeline, unless there's something specific that you can add that doesn't harm your overall grade or any text or things that you will add later on. And there's a much smarter way of doing it. So I talked about grouping and we're gonna head into the light box. If you don't know what that is, it's this tab up here that's called light box. You can click here and that just opens a new kind of menu or overview of all the clips that you have inside your timeline. Now, adjustment layers and text objects and everything will appear in here. So what I suggest you do is either hide that from the timeline so that it doesn't show up or start doing this grouping as soon as you have all the clips before you start adding text and adjustment layers and other stuff in here. So you can make these icons smaller or larger depending on how many shots you have. This is also great for looking at how the different clips are looking overall in your timeline if there's a cohesiveness between the grades. Here you have a lot of default filters that you can use if you have noise, noise reduction in any of your clips or something like that, they already have some here. By default, you'll have all clips selected. And what we're gonna do now is group the clips. So what we can do is select the first clip here from our scene and all the first five clips here are from our apartment scene. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add it into a new group. I'm gonna call this one apartment, but depending on how you wanna structure this, you can do this in any different way that you want. If you had shot this with two cameras, Canon and Sony, this could also be a way of structuring the cameras. And if it's all in the same scene and the same place, maybe that makes more sense. In my case, I wanna grade the two scenes differently. So it makes sense for me to do this and everything was shot on the Sony FX3. So it doesn't really make sense for me to group it any different. Lastly, you can also just put everything into a group and then use the same techniques throughout this. You don't have to have separate groups. So I'm gonna put these into apartment and I'm gonna put these into hike. That will make two groups show up here. So if I choose apartment, we only have the apartment clips and hike, 
only the hiking clips. So if I now close the light box, now we are actually in the hiking clip or in the hiking group. And if you go in here, you can see if we click on a clip, we will actually jump to that clip. So it can also be a way to quickly enter and find a clip. Up here, you can switch back to all clips or you can also go down to groups and you can switch between apartment and between hike if you only want to see the clips in each of the different groups. This is especially good if you're grading by camera but now that I'm grading by scene, they are all together here anyway, so it's fine for me to see all the clips all together. Now, you noticed before that we had two dots up here. We have clip and we had timeline, but now we have two new dots. And if we use the arrows here, you're able to see what all of them are called. So clip and timeline hasn't changed exactly the same before. This is individual clip level grading, and this is the entire timeline as we talked about before. But now we have group pre-clip, so anything that you're grading that happens before the clip adjustments by themselves. We have group post clip. So anything that happens after the corrections or the adjustments you've made to the clip. And this is really great because that means that we have groups where we can do adjustments to all the clips in this group all together and thereby build out the look. So in a more practical way, let's have a look at how this works. If we take it step by step by how you would color grade a normal project, you would start by the conversion if you shot in log. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna head into the group pre-clip. And again, this is just my workflow, so you can do it however you want. I'm gonna go from log to the Winsy White Gamut. So I'm gonna name that and I'm gonna head in here. Hey, take the color space transform, and go from Sony Gamut free, Cine and Sony is log free, the Winsy White Gamut and the Winsy Intermediate. And then I'm gonna head into my post clip here and I'm gonna call this the Winter White Gamut to Rec 709 and hit another color space transform here, the Winter White Gamut, the Vince Intermediate, Rec 709, and Gamut 2.4. Now you'll see that all of the clips in that group has changed into Rec 709. And you can see that I'm affecting all of them. Essentially when I'm doing that, you can see the thumbnails update as well. But when I'm heading in here to the second section, nothing has changed. So what I can do here is just head back to my pre-clip and just copy this one and then apply it in here. I need to apply it on the node level. And then when I head back here, I can take my post clip here and I can add that in here as well. So now everything is in Rec. 9 and that's essentially a quick way to do your conversion. Now, the good thing about this is also that say that instead of this being apartment and, and hike, this could be Canon and Sony. Then for these, I would just change the Canon up to the Canon input color space and the Sony up to the Sony input color space and thereby I can grade everything as it's alike because everything is now in Rec. 9. So there's another way to go about it. If we stick to what we have here, now you'd normally go with correction. So what we could do in here, if you find like a hero frame, say we wanna do three notes, we wanna do balance, we wanna do exposure, and we wanna do potentially some contrast. But I actually wanna do the contrast on the group level, but I'll show you that in a second. For the exposure, I am just going to go in here and change that to Vinci White Gamut and Vinci Intermediate. And then I'm gonna copy that throughout all of my clips so that I have that on all of them. Because this is clip level, this works exactly how you're used to. So it just copies across all of them. And now we will have those color space and gamma selected on all of them. So let's just start with our hero frame here. And I might just want to adjust the exposure a little bit here. So see, it's sitting a little bit low. So I might add half a stop, seeing where it's sitting. I might actually add just a tiny bit more to 0.75. I want to check if my balance here is sitting in the correct place and it looks like it's okay. But usually the Sony clips tend to be a little bit too magenta. So I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. And that helped a little bit to get rid of that magenta. I'm not gonna go in detail on all this. It's more tutorial about how to do the workflow rather than this, the grade itself. But now comes the fun part. I'm gonna skip the contrast for now. I'm gonna add a few notes in here. So I'm gonna add contrast here. I'm gonna add a loop note. I'm gonna add some curves and some, in this case, actually, I'm gonna go a little softer. So I'm just gonna add some saturation here. And that's all I'm gonna do for this particular clip. The reason being that this first scene, I want it to be quite moody and desaturated. So what I'm gonna do in here is just add my contrast. So I head back to my waveform so I can see what I'm doing and just add in some contrast here, power up everything. See where her skin tones are lying. I think we can go a little bit stronger here, something like this. And I think that already looks pretty good. So if I look in this case, I might just boost the warmth a little bit in the game. And for saturation, 
I just want to go in and make it quick. So I'm going to use the color slice here and just desaturate it. Now we're getting that very dark, moody kind of feel in these clips, and that's exactly what I wanted. And this is now applied to all of the clips. So you can see that the look are now affecting everything and the desaturation as well along with the contrast. So to quickly grade these, I can now just head into my clip level here and say, okay, exposure, this one needs to be bumped by maybe one and a half to make it a bit brighter. I'm gonna go super quick. We don't have much skin zones here, but let's just adjust the skin zones a little bit. In here, we're gonna bump the exposure a little bit again, maybe half a stop. Let's just do the same adjustments on all of them here. And here, I'm actually liking where the exposure is sitting. So again, it's maybe just adjusting the hue here a little bit and the last scene here just to give it a notch of exposure as well so you can see now because we can lock in the look here it's way faster to grade so let me show you a second example on the hiking clips here because we have a little bit more going on so let's use this as our hero frame and again we're just going to build out a little note tree for our look so i'm going to do contrast i'm going to do look i'm going to do curves I'm gonna do color slice, and I think that might be what we need for this. So again, I'm gonna go in and add my contrast first because I like that to be throughout everything here. And I'm gonna go a little bit harder on it here, something like this. And then I'm gonna head back to my clip level so I can properly expose it. And I am just gonna go negative here. Something like this, I think looks pretty good. And then with the balance, we pull up our vector scope. I think we have the same issue here. Slightly too magenta. Just gonna head back and rotate it back just a tiny bit here. Pretty happy with that. And now I could just go back and do it to all the clips. But before I do that, I wanna build out my entire look so I can make it look exactly how I want. Now, in this case, again, we're not gonna go too crazy. I might wanna warm up my highlights a little bit here just to make everything a little bit brighter and warmer overall. And I wanna make sure that my jacket here is sitting at the black point and looks like it's pretty good. Then for the curves, essentially the greens here, I don't like how artificial they're looking. So I'm gonna push up my greens a little bit to something like this, where there's a little bit warmer. And then I'm gonna desaturate them quite a bit again, something like this to get that overall look and get more separation from her overall. And then for the color slice, I'm just gonna boost the skin tones a little bit and the density a little bit here, something I pretty much always do. And now I'm pretty happy with where that's sitting overall. So from here, I can go in and grade all the other clips and correct them. So in this case, we're definitely off in terms of the balance. So that might be the first thing I wanna switch here. I'm gonna take my offset and try and rotate it a little bit so we can get it to sit in the right spot. Check where everything is sitting all the way through here and see if we can balance our exposure a little bit more. So I can just make maybe, maybe one here and half a stop on the dark side. And then I'm seeing that it looks overall like it's a bit too green. I kind of want this part here to sit on the darker side. So just need to push it around so that it looks like it's sitting in the correct spot. And this is starting to be somewhat closer. So I'm not gonna go perfect here and everything looking okay. In here, let's see if everything is good. Maybe rotating the hue a little bit. Just seeing where the exposure is lying. I'm pretty happy with that. This one is too dark. Maybe bump that up by half a stop, one and a half maybe, something like this, one is better. And that's the way that I would go through all these different clips to make sure that everything is sitting in the right spot and thereby grading way more efficiently than I otherwise would, where it just takes way longer to apply them all. And when I've then gone in and corrected all my clips, like I have here, now I would go in and go through all the different clips and see if I needed to adjust my look up here in any way, and then slowly make the adjustments throughout so they're actually working the way that they're supposed to for all the clips. Say that some greens and some clips are getting too artificial or looking weird, then that's a way that we could go about that. But the way of grading on a group level here, especially have a lot of clips, now I only have what, 11 clips in here, so it's not that much, but say that I had 100 clips from a larger project, this is a much faster way to create an overall look and then correct on an individual basis. I really hope that was useful for you, especially those of you who don't like grading as much and just want a quicker and more efficient way of doing it. This is how I'm going about grading pretty much all my larger projects. Now, if I'm grading for social media, I usually do it clip by clip, depending on what I'm grading. But as soon as I'm grading a longer form project, then this is the way that I'm going about it. 
And this is just my techniques. Again, you can play around with it however you want. If you have any questions or anything that wasn't clear, anything that you would like to see more of or that you're in doubt of, just leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to help out, try and answer as many questions as I can. And I just love hanging out with you guys in the comments below. If you want to learn more about all the basics of color grading, all the way from conversion, correction, and to grading, and grading your own LUTs, then I highly suggest you check out my color grading course where I'm going through all of that in a way that's easy to understand and makes it simple. It's not teaching you how to become a professional colorist, but if you're a content creator, this is perfect because you'll just get everything that you need to start grading your projects like this and improve very fast. So with all of that set, I'll just catch you in the next video and hopefully see you down in the comments. Until then, take care.